In this video, I want to continue our discussion of sure estimation. So in the last video, we said that for each individual, there might be some relationship between the dependent variable, which is, let's say, in general, has T observations, and a matrix which contains that particular individual's uh, independent variables, Xi, and a specific parameter vector beta i. And we spoke about how if we had n indiv individuals, each of which having their own dependent variable and their own set of independent variables, we can actually stack the system. So we can write it as a sort of system of uh, matrices and vectors, that which we've indicated here. So when we stack the dependent variables on top of one another, we actually get a system which is n t by 1 in dimensions, because each in individual vector is t observations, and then when I stack n of them on top of one another, I get nt observations of the dependent variable. And then this is equal to this sort of matrix here, which is a matrix of matrices. And we spoke about how this would have dimensions nt by nt. And it's that times a parameter vector, which is nt by 1 again, such that when these two things multiply, we get left with something which is nt by 1 in the end, because obviously the dimensions of the left-hand side have to match the dimensions of the right-hand side. And then finally, we have this error vector, which is also n t by 1. So we've written our sort of individual equations as a system of or it's sort of a matrix equation form. And just like we did for other matrix equations, we could actually write this in a much simpler form. We could just say, well, let's call this whole left hand vector y, forgetting about the subscript now. And that's equal to x times beta plus epsilon. So the idea here is that the matrix X is actually a matrix of the matrices containing each individual's independent variables. OK, so I want to continue our discussion of sure systems, and I want to explain why we need to think about sure systems slightly differently. So if we assume that the Gauss-Markov condition of zero conditional mean is upheld, so that is that the expectation of the error given our independent variables is equal to zero, then we can write that the variance of our error term, so the variance of error given that we have our matrix of independent variables x, is actually the same thing as the expectation of the error vector times the transpose of the error vector given that we have x. Okay, and we can write this out in slightly longer form if we actually use the definitions of the given parameter vectors. This is just equal to the expectation of the error vector, which is just E1 through En, times that parameter vector transpose. But we have to take care, we actually need to take the transpose of each of the individual components, because essentially these components aren't scalar, they're vectors themselves, so we need to transpose them. So we get E1 transpose through to En transposed. And implicitly here, I should really be writing here, given that we have x, but I'm just going to sort of leave it out there just because it's a bit hard to write. And we're going to use this in the next video to actually help us derive the variance covariance matrix. And that's going to tell us a little bit about the estimation strategy we need to use for sure systems.